Hello everyone, a uh, very very good evening and uh, welcome to Study IQ IAS English. I'm Abhishek Singh and uh, in this part of the lecture in our series of uh, doing the complete ancient history of class 11th by Arish Sharma and also it will be having Hello the Hello everyone, a uh, very very good evening and Just uh, guys. welcome to Study IQ IAS English. I'm Abhishek Singh and uh, in this part of the lecture in our series of uh, doing the complete ancient history of class 11th by Arish Sharma and also it will be okay okay so guys I think again uh, there was a uh, eco issue in the voice so that's why so I hope that in this particular lecture we are uh, ready to revise our complete part that we have already covered in the last 34 35 lectures and today we are bringing the first part of our uh, complete module of the ancient history revision in this we are going to cover 100 questions which will be encompassing all the uh, you know important topics i will not say that every single topic will be covered but only those topics which are crucial the approach which is adopted by upsc in the real examination that approach will be adopted here in the questions so make it sure that you don't forget to share this video with your uh, classmates with your friends or colleagues anybody who is preparing for the civil services examination but proceeding further let me tell you a very very important thing as well that if you are preparing you are aspiring for 2024 civil services examination then make it sure that you must join these upcoming batches which are going to start from the 23rd of august 2023 and guys why are these batches important because these batches are called prelims to interview or p2i batches where we are providing each and every required detail that is uh, essential for any candidate to clear the examination be it the essential coverage of the general studies be it the important current affairs throughout the year or the practice paper mock papers or even the solution of the pyqs and along with that various value added uh, provisions will also be there like the mains residential program in which Suppose if you are able to clear the prelims examination under this particular program, then without any extra cost, you will be called to Delhi at the Study IQ. Here, Study IQ will take care of each and everything related to your accommodation, your uh, studies and everything, and you will be provided classes also, especially for the mains. So that is a very special feature that usually we don't have anywhere else. So you can definitely go and uh, check these uh, programs, that is the prelims to interview program. In case if you are interested to join this program, in our upcoming batches do not forget to use this code asr live which will uh, give the benefit of uh, slashing in the fees particularly it will be reduced from 70000 to just rupees 29999 now let's get started to the questions and uh, here is the first question for everybody <coughs> i hope you are uh, able to see the questions very conveniently the first question says that with reference to the history of india consider the following statement all right Statement number one, wheat and barley were the first crop to be grown. Statement number two, the Garo Hills and banks of the river Kaveri were some of the areas where the agriculture developed. All right. So usually we get to see such questions where the earliest crop which was grown by the mankind, that is the point of contention. As per the information provided, in the book that is the ncrt of course we come across that mehargarh which was the site of the cultivation of barley and wheat right this particular place supposedly was amongst the ill right amongst the most ancient sites of cultivation however when we talk about the latest developments in the history you all might have uh, heard the name called as a koldihwa or you all might have heard the name right for example uh, even if we right even if we talk about uh, the gangetic doab even that area is also regarded as one of the one of the oldest places where the agriculture was developed got it everyone so we can say that we can say that as per the book the right answer is going to be option number a because rs sharma he suggests that the wheat and barley were the first crops to be grown particularly if we talk about right if we talk about uh, 
द मैप ऑफ इंडियन सबकॉन्टिनेंट देन इन द नॉर्थ वेस्टर्न रीजन इन द नॉर्थ वेस्टर्न रीजन पर्टिकुलरली इन द बलूचिस्तान पर्टिकुलरली इन द बलूचिस्तान रीजन देर वॉज अ प्लेस कॉल्ड एज मेहरगढ़ देर वॉज अ प्लेस कॉल्ड एज मेहरगढ़ फ्रॉम वेयर वी हैड द एविडेंसेज ऑफ एट एविडेंसेज ऑफ द अर्लीएस्ट कल्टिवेशन ऑफ द अर्लीएस्ट कल्टिवेशन All right, everyone. However, when we talk about the current scenario, as per the latest understanding, the earliest sites where the agricultural developments might have taken place, they are located in the Doab region. They are located in Doab region. Now, second statement: Garo Hills and banks of the river Kaveri were some of the areas where the agriculture developed. Of course, not because these areas were comparatively less populated, comparatively lesser developed, and more densely vegetated areas more densely vegetated areas therefore it was not possible for the early humans to survive without much difficulty in these particular areas got it everyone now the next question question number 2 consider the following statements traces of the ash have been found around the kurnool caves an inscribed stone was found in the rosetta a town on the north coast of the egypt the tools made from the limestone were found in the caves of france so this particular question it includes certain facts which are given in the ncert as comparative pointers when we compare when we compare the you know prehistoric period in india to the prehistoric period of the world in that particular context we get to see such terms and such places in the ncert select the correct answer using the codes given below one only one and three one and two or one two and three so you have to tell exactly about the exactly about the traces of uh, right traces of the ashes near kurnool of course that is right of course that is correct so it actually indicates that right, it actually indicates that here when we talk about uh, right, when we talk about the traces of ashes right we must be sure that only when the fire would have been discovered the fire would have been discovered only then we can be sure about the presence of right presence of the ashes all right everyone similarly when we talk about uh, the tools made from the limestone near the cave in the caves of france let me tell you that usually usually uh the france is uh, known for having some of the oldest stone tools of course we might have heard the names like the old one or the the okelian tool right all these however we don't have any such information that the limestone tools were present in the french region all right so let us see what is the answer here so right answer is right right, right answer here that will be option number c right answer num option number c 1 and 2 so as i told you that of course the kurnool has the evidence of the traces of the ash why kurnool is a site located in andhra pradesh and that particular place has the evidences of the upper paleolithic period and during that upper paleolithic period we have the information that fire might have been discovered okay fire might have been invented so definitely the first statement becomes correct and everybody should in fact everybody must know about the rosetta rosetta is that famous stone inscription that famous stone inscription with the help of which the world archaeologists were able to understand the ancient egyptian script and thus they were able to decode the complete details of the ancient egyptian civilization that is very very important to understand that is why rosetta stone has got an incredible significance in the ancient history right so right answer is here option number c 
the first and the second statements are correct third statement is not correct okay so good evening everybody those who are live good evening to all of you now question number 3 is right in front of you consider the following uh, sites bhimbetka hansgi mehargad kurnool so how many of these are not a paleolithic site not a paleolithic site <coughs> all right everyone i should say that this question is a little bit tricky because almost all the places that you are uh, seeing on the screen they all are somehow you know related to the related to the stone age sites only but the question is asking particularly about the paleolithic sites what is the meaning of paleolithic those who don't understand guys paleolithic means the old stone age okay old stone age or the early stone age okay early stone age this has got three distinct time frames that is the right early paleolithic early paleolithic mid paleolithic and upper paleolithic upper paleolithic the identity of this particular age that was the right food gathering okay food gathering and food gathering and hunting and hunting okay so primary occupation was food gathering and hunting now the right answer the question is asking that which of the following is not a paleolithic site or sites not a paleolithic site okay everyone so the right answer here is option number a only one of these that is the hansgi okay hansgi is not a paleolithic site because we all are aware we all must be aware that mehargarh is a paleolithic site kurnool we just saw in the previous question it was a paleolithic site belongs to the upper paleolithic age and bhimbetka is probably the most well known paleolithic site that is located in located in madhya pradesh in the vindhya hills region all right in the vindhya hills region so hansgi that is left that is not a paleolithic site however there have been the traces of the mesolithic late mesolithic and neolithic uh, evidences from the hansgi got it everyone now moving further to the next question consider the following pairs on the one side we have got the grains and the bones of certain animals that means on the one side we are having the archaeological evidences archaeological evidences on the other side we have the particular location or particular site from where we have recovered these archaeological evidences so in the first we have wheat barley sheep goat cattle all these and the site is saying that that all these are found from a place called mehargarh in present day pakistan all right then we have the evidences of millet cattle sheep goat pig and this is saying that all these evidences are found from a place in bihar called chirand then we have wheat and lentil and the site is the uh, gufkral which is saying that wheat and lentil were found from the place called gufkral in jammu and kashmir and the last one says that rice and fragmentary animal bone fragmentary animal bone that means uh, you know scattered into the different fragments different parts and the place is basically koldehwa found that is presently in uttar pradesh presently in uttar pradesh okay so guys you have to answer this question that how many of right how uh, sorry which of the pairs given above is are correctly matched you have to find the correct match amongst amongst these four pairs of the four pairs of the table so here wheat barley sheep at least wheat and barley they are definitely present in the mehargarh that means it is absolutely correct absolutely correct similarly lentil is present in gufkral so that means it is also correct however millet remember that chirand is located in chirand is located in bihar okay and 
as per the ancient records bihar has been that particular area where high rainfalls comparatively better rainfalls were received therefore it would be not very appropriate to expect that bihar particularly chirand it would be having it would be having the presence of the millets naturally naturally the millets were right millets were found in some of the arid or semi arid areas which were absent in bihar so if we have the basic understanding of the relation between geography and history we can easily tell that the right answer is option number b because 1 3 and 4 these are correctly matched whereas uh, the second that is not correctly matched that is not correctly matched okay everyone now <coughs> if we are moving to the next question that is the fifth one the question is here that uh, traces of the mortars and pestles right mortars and pestles have been found in what is the mortar what is mortar exactly mortar means basically the adhesive which is used to you know which is used to do the masonry to build the houses to join the bricks that is basically mortar okay so mortar and pestle they have been found where mehargarh burzhom and uh, daujali hading and gufkaral guys remember that at least in the places where we have studied in the ncert sometimes even this type of question could be asked for example we have studied about mehargarh we have studied about burzhom we have studied about gufkaral and we are very much sure we must be sure that in mehargarh we have never heard about any type of any type of uh, you know mortar found in that area rather we saw that the presence probably the earliest presence earliest presence of the mud bricks in the indian subcontinent okay earliest presence of the mud brick in the indian subcontinent that is of course from mehargarh of course from mehargarh however when we talk about uh, mortars and pestles one should doubt that was it even possible or because we haven't seen that in the ncert details now burj hum and uh, gufkaral do you remember that particular chapter in the rs sharma given uh, on the neolithic period where we saw that the people in the burj hum and gufkaral they used to they used to live in the pits there was the practice of pit dwelling if you remember that pit dwelling isn't it so here the right answer must be what right answer must be the daujali hading daujali hading <coughs> now this particular place let me tell you daujali hading right this is actually right this is actually not amongst the described places in the ncert okay so sometimes you have to be very much sure that particularly which place we have studied about and which place is actually not given there got it everyone now moving further to the question number 6 that which one of the following statement is not correct about the indus valley civilization okay so about indus valley civilization which of the following places is not correct that you have to tell that you have to tell okay so here the first statement is just a second guys the first statement is the evidence of the some form of irrigation have been found embroidered garments were unknown in the indus civilization many of the cities had covered drains mohanjodaro harappa and lothal had store houses now you have to tell that which of the following statements is not correct not correct yes everyone try to reply to this question quickly which of the above statements is not correct here <coughs> tell me everybody so i hope it is visible to all of you evidence of the some form of irrigation irrigation evidence we have found we have seen the 
presence of the channels, presence of the canal like structures, even though they were not canals, they were simply the, they were simply the small channels. Then uh, we have embroidered garments were unknown in the Indus civilization. Now that is a problem, you know, that is a challenging statement because garments were present and we also have the presence of the needles. I hope you have gone through the NCRT and you must have seen that. Garments were present and needles were also present. Gemstones were also present. Beads, right, beads, beaded jewelry. So, if the person has got garments, person has got the needles and the person has got the shiny beads made of the you know gemstones sometimes semi precious gemstones so why can't it be possible why can't it be possible that those people might be doing some part some sort of embroidery as well and indeed they were doing embroidery we have we have the evidences of the embroidery okay so this statement we have to keep a question mark this might be the answer. Many of the cities had covered drains. Of course, many of the cities had the covered drains. Suppose if there is a statement which says that all the cities had covered drains, that will be that will be wrong because we all are aware that Kalibangan it had uncovered drains, uncovered drains. So the right answer basically here is going to be option number B. Option number B. Why? Because uh, Mohanjadaro, Harappa and uh, Lothal, they had the storehouses or simply the granaries, right. Okay, the granaries. Great granaries or the granaries or the storehouses, whatever you say, they were found in the major Harappan cities, which we have already discussed, already studied. So, the right answer is here, option number B, right, option number B, that is embroidered garments were unknown. Unknown is a little bit extreme statement. Got it. Question number seventh. In the context of the Indus Valley civilization, which of the following statement is correct about the fancy? Right. About the fancy. What is this uh, fancy? It is a type of uh, glazed, shiny, you know, glazed and shiny surface of the tiles or uh, potteries which are probably which are probably found in the ancient civilizations okay so some sort of shiny some sort of uh, you know some sort of uh, glittery type of surface of the pottery so the fancy were right the fancy were an artificially produced material and were used to make the beads, bangles, earrings and tiny vessels. Then fiancé is a naturally found mineral used in making vessels. Fiancé was a kind of stone, stone tool used in the pot making. Or fiancé, right, were stone weights found in the Lothal. So this particular question is from the new NCRT. It is not from the old one. It is from the new NCRT, right? So, what is the right answer? It is a very simple question, but due to that, due to that particular term, it appears a little bit, you know, unusual, little bit difficult for some people. Right answer here, that is option number, option number A, the fancy were an artificially produced, artificially produced material. Remember this point, why? Because this was obtained by uh, melting, in fact, by heating and bringing the quartz to a semi-molten stage and then this quartz was uh, actually used it was used to uh, you know just mend over the surface of the potteries or surface of the beads or sometimes the bangles so that it gives a shiny appearance gives a shiny appearance that is basically the purpose of the fancy right Apart from that, all the statements are incorrect. Now, question number eight. With reference to the Vedic history of India, consider the following statements. With reference to the Vedic history of India, consider the following statements. In Rig Veda, the hymns are called as a Sukta, which means well said. Sukta means well said. 
then some of the hymns in the Rig Veda are in the form of dialogues between a sage named Vishwamitra and two rivers, Bias and Yamuna. Bias and Yamuna. Okay. Iron was unknown in the later Vedic period. The Siu were the opponents of the Aryans who did not perform the sacrifices. All right. So now you have to tell that which of the uh, statements given here are correct. 1, 2 and 4, 1 and 4, 1, 3 and 4 or all of the above statements are correct. Yes, everyone. So when we are talking about Rig Veda, remember that Rig Veda, that is the oldest among all the Vedas and has 1028 hymns or hymns. Okay. Also known as the Sukta. Also known as the Sukta. Sukta means Sa Ukta or, or well said. Right. Well said. Here, when I am talking about Rig Veda, remember that Rig Veda is actually having 10 different mandals. How many? 10 different mandals out of which it is believed that what is the meaning of bundles? Mandals basically means books. Okay. Out of which it is believed that the first and the tenth mandals, they are the latest, they are the latest additions, right? latest additions. Whereas uh, from the second to the seventh, that is regarded as the oldest, regarded as the oldest. And in the third mandal, particularly, in the third mandal, we find the reference of a Gayatri Mantra particularly that was composed by Vishwamitra who appears to be a very important sage of the Rig Vedic period. In that itself, we find some of the suktas, some of the suktas which are in the form of dialogues between Vishwamitra and the two rivers in that region. Which region? in the region of uh, Sapta Sandhav, which was the primary area or the primary region of settlement of the early Vedic people, of the Rig Vedic people. Iron was unknown to the later Vedic people. Now, now this will be a wrong statement. Why? Because everybody understands that iron became available to the Aryans by around uh, the end of the end of the second millennium BC, that is approximately around 1000 BC or 1100 BC, that is the time. We even have the evidences from the places like Ataranji Kheda in Uttar Pradesh, even the places like Mehargad in uh, Balochistan or even in the southern India, the places like Dharwad, they have the evidences of iron available as soon or as early as around 1200 BC to 1000 BC. So, we cannot say that the later Vedic period people were unknown to the iron. They were unaware about the iron. We cannot say that. The Sioux were the opponents of the Aryans who did not perform sacrifices, of course, because we all are aware. We might have studied that Dasas and the Sioux, they were basically the two opponents whom the Aryans were whom the Aryans were contesting against and Dasas were nobody but the Aryan tribes only who might have come earlier, who might have settled in the subcontinent earlier than the majority of the Aryan communities and therefore, they might have established the matrimonial relations with the local population. Whereas the Dasyu, Dasyus were essentially local people with certain anthropogenic features right and this is why this is why the Aryans have distinctively described them as a short heighted or as a flat nose people. In fact, they have criticized that the Sioux they did not perform the sacrifices did not perform the yagya. So, that exactly that, that exactly tells that the Sioux were someone who did not perform the Vedic sacrifices. Right answer here that will be option number B. Right answer option number B that is uh, 1 and 4. Right 1 and 4 are correct. Remember. So, some of the hymns in the Rig Veda are in the form of the dialogues between the sage named right, Vishwamitra and the two rivers 
that is the uh, Vyas and Jamuna. Okay, Vyas and Jamuna. Basically, Vyas and Chaturdri. I told you about the Sapta Sandhav region. So remember that. Okay, Yamuna is not in the Sapta Sandhav region. Now, how many of the following statements is are incorrect about the megalith? What is the meaning of megalith? Megalith means the particular age or the period of time when there were the large stone graves we have found. Okay. Megaliths were a kind of stone tool used in the megalithic culture. These were the stone boulders mainly used to mark the burial sites. Megaliths were the materials used for making vessels. Megaliths were the minerals mainly found in the banks of the river Satlaj. So, how many of the statements given above are incorrect about the megalith? Incorrect about the megaliths. Remember that. One statement, two statement, three statement, all the statements. How many of them are incorrect about the megaliths? So, if you remember our chapter on the Sangam period, there we had actually discussed about the beginning of the megalithic culture in this particular in this particular region, which was the area also known as Tamilgam, right? Tamilgam, also known as Tamilgam. Okay. You can also simply spell it as we pronounce it, Tamilgam. Okay. So here, it is believed that in the time period approximately 1000 BC, 1000 BC to 300 BC. Guys, remember one point, remember one point that as per the latest excavations in the Tamil Nadu region, particularly in the Vaigai river valley, as per the latest excavations, this time period or this uh, chronology, right, this chronological period might go further backward. That means uh, it might go further further old in the uh, in the history particularly approximately 1500 to 600 bc approximately on the same time slot as there was the vedic culture or early vedic culture in the northern india but it is still subjected to the approval at present we have only this timeline present in our textbooks so we have to consider this timeline so here during this timeline, there was uh, probably the settlement of some of the earliest, some of the earliest cultures in the southern India, where the people used to erect the huge stone, right, huge stones at the burial sites of their, of their warrior communities. So, these burial sites having the large stone boulders, they became famous as the megalithic sites in our modern archaeological excavations. So, how many of the statements given here are incorrect? Right, incorrect. So, let me tell you the right answer is option number C that three statements are incorrect. So, megalithics were a kind of stone tool, incorrect. Stone boulders mainly used to mark burial sites, of course, yes, correct. Megaliths were material used for making vessels, incorrect. Megaliths were minerals mainly found in the banks of the river Stratlaj, incorrect. So, three statements here, they are incorrect and one is correct, one is correct. Now, there is another question, the oracle bones have been unearthed at Inamgaon. Oracle bones are some of the oldest evidences of writing in the world. They were probably used in the ritualistic uh, practices. So, how many of these statements are incorrect? Okay, how many of these statements are incorrect. Only one, only two, all of them or none of them. So guys, right answer here. Let me tell you first of all that oracle bones, oracle bones, they were definitely one of the earliest evidences of the writing efforts by the, by the human culture. And surprisingly, they are not found in India. They are not found in Inamgaon particularly. So, where are they found? They are found in the Chinese region, in the Chinese region, particularly in the Yangtze and uh, Huanghu, Huanghu regions. And 
they were probably used in the ritualistic practices of course they were used in the ritualistic practices of the ritualistic practices of the future forecasting okay future prediction so here we can say we can say that uh, at least first statement is definitely definitely not correct so the question is asking that how many of these statements are incorrect the right answer here is option number a only one statement only the right this one is this one is incorrect right rest here they are correct and correct only this is incorrect all right right answer is option number option number a then question number 11th we have the consider the following statements both the kshatriyas and the vaishyas they could perform the sacrifices or yagya rajgrih present day rajgir in bihar was the capital of magad for several years for several years no evidence of the punch marked coins in the mahajanapada period right so how many statements given above are correct you have to find the correct statements related to the mahajanpad period and i am very sure very sure that you all might be able to find the correct answer tell me yes everyone kshatriyas and vaishya could perform the sacrifices yes or no they could perform yes everyone they could definitely perform right then rajgrih was a capital yes that was also a capital that was also the capital of the capital of the magad for several years rajgir that was followed by followed by one vaishali for a very brief period during the during the kala shok and then it was further shifted to a new settlement called as a patliputra which later became patna which is the, the capital of bihar till today so in history we have the three distinct places right rajgir rajgir also had the distinct names like it was called as giri vraj it was called as rajgrih or rajgir depending upon the different sources and patliputra is also famously called as the patli gram okay remember that so the right answer here is option number a because this particular statement no evidence of the punch marked coins in the mahajan but this cannot be correct this statement cannot be correct why because we all are aware that the mahajanpada period it had the concept of the right concept of the shreni right shrenis or the guilds or the guilds of the merchants we have studied about it guilds of the merchants and in this the merchants they used to right they used to mint their coins right mint their coins okay their own coins and these own coins they used to have they used to have the punch mark okay punch marked usually having the symbols like uh, peacock sun crescent full moon such type of symbols hills you know trees such type of symbols were often used to make a punch mark on the thin metal sheet making it an acceptable form of exchange or a coin or a currency coin question number 12th consider the following statements the buddha belonged to a small gana known as the shakya gana and he was a kshatriya as per upanishads ultimately both the atman and the brahman were one there is no mention of the women thinkers in upanishads as per the vanaprastha ashram one had to live in the forest and meditate and meditate so which of the above statements given above are correct everyone buddha belonged to the small gana called as the shakya gana gana here means the republic state gana here means the republic state and of course that is of course that is correct okay and 
एज पर द उपनिषद अल्टीमेटली बोथ आत्मन एंड ब्राह्मण आत्मा एंड ब्रह्म दैट मीन्स द सोल एंड द डिवाइन सोल बोथ आर अल्टीमेटली वन सो बेसिकली वेदांत द वेदांत दैट उपनिषद राइट दैट पर्टिकुलर उपनिषद अल्टीमेटली टॉक्स अबाउट इट एंड मेजरली इफ यू ऑब्जर्व द मेन ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ द उपनिषद दैट इज टू फाइंड आउट द बेस्ट पॉसिबल मेथड बेस्ट पॉसिबल पाथ फॉर द इंटीग्रेशन ऑफ द लाइफ सोल विथ द डिवाइन सोल ओके द मॉर्टल सोल विथ द सुप्रीम सोल देर इज नो मेन्शन ऑफ द वुमेन थिंकर्स इन उपनिषद नाउ दिस इज अ ट्रिकी स्टेटमेंट नाउ दिस इज अ ट्रिकी स्टेटमेंट वाई Usually we say that whenever there is a an absolute positive or absolute negative statement, we abstain choosing it from or we abstain from choosing it as the correct statement, right? But here let me tell you that this particular statement, yet this particular statement, this can be eliminated. Of course, this can be eliminated because let me tell you here. that uh, this particular statement no mention of the women thinkers in upanishads right is not is not incorrect remember that it is not incorrect okay if suppose someone says that it is uh, correct and tells the name of uh, certain upanishad certain scholars like uh, you know suppose uh, lopa mudra apala ghosha okay such type of you know gargi maitrei remember that these are the female scholars but they don't belong to they don't belong to the upanishads right however however if we say that there is complete absence of the women thinkers then it is not correct then it is not correct why because we have the several treaties several treaties written upon the upanishads in which we are having the presence of the female scholars like gargi gargi is one that scholar who finds a mention in the upanishads as well okay everyone so here even if we talk about the uh, gargi or uh, we talk about uh, maitreyi okay we talk about uh, uh, lopa mudra we have the evidences that in the various treaties written upon the upanishads we have the mention of such thinkers so therefore what happens therefore this statement is not correct okay then as per the varnaprastha ashram one had to live in the forest and meditate of course that is correct so here 1 2 and 4 1 2 and 4 option number c is the c is the right answer okay everyone now question number 13 he is here it is an early type of the buddhist monastery consisting of an uh, open court surrounded by the open cells accessible through an entrance porch these were originally constructed to shelter the monks when it became difficult for them to lead the wanderers life just one statement is enough for all of you to answer this question constructed to constructed to shelter the monks shelter the monks means what shelter the monks means vihara vihara because this is purpose this is having the purpose of shelter this is having the purpose of uh, right purpose of the relics right relics mound this is the chaitya the place of worship or shrine okay in buddhism sangha that is the association of okay association of the monks okay so here we can say that right answer is option number a vihara this is the easiest question probably that you might have seen in this particular session guys if you are supposedly loving this session don't forget to share this session with your friends as well so that they can also join it if not live then also you can share it on all the platforms wherever you are so that they can also watch it after the live session is over now consider the following pairs grihapati 
देन उलावार वेलार्स कडाइसियर्स ग्राम भोजका हु वेर दे इंडिपेंडेंट फार्मर्स ऑर्डिनरी प्लो मैन लार्ज लैंड ओनर्स लैंडलेस लेबरर्स विलेज हेडमैन सो विद रेफरेंस टू द हिस्ट्री ऑफ नॉर्थ एंड सदर्न इंडिया विच ऑफ द पेयर्स गिवेन अब इज आर करेक्टली मैच वन टू थ्री वन थ्री फोर टू थ्री फोर फाइव ऑल ऑफ द अब गाइज प्रोबेबली दिस इज अ नॉट वेरी डिफिकल्ट क्वेश्चन आई वुड से गृहपति गृहपति और गहपति दे वर इंडिपेंडेंट फार्मर्स दे वर इंडिपेंडेंट फार्मर्स वेलार्स वेलार्स वेर अर्लियर दे वर अर्लियर द एग्रीकल्चरल लेबरर्स बट ड्यूरिंग द ड्यूरिंग द पल्लवा पीरियड द वेलार्स बिकम द लार्ज लैंड ओनर्स और द लार्ज लैंड लॉर्ड्स ओके कडाइसियर्स ऑन द अदर हैंड दे वे आर द लैंडलेस लेबरर्स सम वॉट सिमिलर टू द सिमिलर टू द शूद्रास इन द नॉर्दर्न इंडिया ओके रिमेंबर दैट सो हियर द राइट आंसर इज वेरी इजी टू अंडरस्टैंड द राइट आंसर इज ऑप्शन नंबर डी ऑल ऑफ द अब बिकॉज वी कैन से दैट इफ वी हैव मैच गृहपति वी हैव मैच गृहपति और गहपति दैट्स एब्सोल्युटली करेक्ट दैट मीन्स द आंसर That is definitely not going to be option number C. All right, option number C. Now, when we have right, when we have the fifth one, gram bhojak, the gram bhojak, gram bhojak was definitely the village headman during the Satvahana period, during the uh, during the Satvahana period as well as as well as during the post Gupta period, uh, right? In that era as well, in the Chalukyan region. the gram bhojak and gram mahajan these two were the common names present for the local chieftains so here village headman was called gram bhojak absolutely correct so if the first and fifth both are correct d is the answer here d is the answer here okay remember that now question number 15th with reference to the history of india how many of the given statement is are not correct about mathura mathura is a very famous place in the ancient history we all are aware about its antiquity about its archaeological significance and about its historical importance also so first statement says that mathura was located at the crossroads of two major routes of travel and trade from the northwest to the east and from north to south Mathura was known for extremely fine sculpture art in the ancient times. Mathura was the second capital of the Shunga rulers. Roman lamps, glass wares and gems have been found in Mathura. Have been found in Mathura. So now tell me using the common sense and the understanding of Indian history from RS Sharma reply me this question that uh, you have to select the correct choice that right how many of the given statements are not correct not correct incorrect statements you have to tell okay only one only two only three or all the above statements guys if you read these statements carefully then you can understand that uh, mathura was located where was mathura located if you remember this particular map right if you remember this particular map so here mathura is located somewhere in this particular place so when we are going from when we are going from the northwest right from the northwest towards the eastern part then also mathura is there and when we are going from uh, north to south then also mathura is coming in the way. so mathura is actually located on the crossroads absolutely correct extremely fine sculptures absolutely correct mathura school of art is very famous second capital of the shunga rulers shunga rulers ruled from uh, pataliputra and later later their base was shifted to the vidisha not to mathura okay not to mathura so here this statement is not correct then roman lamps glass wares and gems have been found in mathura i don't think so because we have never studied in the ncert that mathura had the presence of uh, roman lamp or glass wares or like that anything 
okay anything like that we don't we have not studied that so definitely that is not correct that's not correct so what is the right answer here right answer is option number b only two statements that is the third and fourth only two statements are incorrect they are incorrect all right everyone so uh, in this there were a total of 15 questions and i hope that these 15 questions were up to the mark up to the level of uh, upsc civil services preliminary examinations questions in history so make it sure that if you actually want to solve or understand the solution of such questions which are up to the mark of upsc examination so do not forget to join the same time uh, in tomorrow as well because uh, tomorrow the second part of this 100 question series that will be live at 4 pm and in case if you are looking for 2024 civil services examination as your target then guys this is a golden opportunity for all of you that we are starting our new evening batches from 23rd of august where in the prelims to interview program or the, that is the p2i batch which is offered in uh, english english as well as in hindi guys there are a uh, lots of benefits right lot of benefits which are essential for any candidate to succeed in this examination which include the individual one to one mentorship the flagship right flagship a uh, mains residential program and also it provides you the comprehensive coverage of the entire syllabus not just through the class but also through the handwritten notes and the dedicated books published by study iq exclusively for the upsc aspirants so you don't have to don't have to you know wander anywhere else for anything required or related to this examination so this program is like a one stop solution which you can definitely check you can also download our application if you have not downloaded it yet and find the details about this particular program in case if you want to enroll yourself or anybody in your family or friend circle then do not forget to use this code asr live remember that any other code will not be uh, that much useful if you are using this particular code it is going to give the maximum benefit of the fees okay so that's all in my side and thank you so much for watching it guys take care bye bye and let's meet tomorrow in the second part of this lecture that is the 16th to 30th question we will be covering tomorrow 4 pm live on the same channel so if you have not subscribed to this channel do subscribe it and hit the bell icon so that let's meet tomorrow thanks so much everyone take care bye bye Jai.